Yeah, 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 it's a girl intro. I need to adjust this. Hey guys, welcome back. We've got another tutorial. I know it's been like a substantial amount of time since I've been on this platform, but I want to make it up for you with a huge tutorial. So in this video, we're going to cover a couple more like intermediate like render techniques, and but we're going to kind of look a little bit more at like lighting set up, more complex shaders, um, custom roughness maps, surface imperfections, that kind of thing is going to be involved in this tutorial. So hopefully you're going to pick up a bunch of skills. And again, this video isn't just so that you can work it all the way through and that's your final product. If you do that, that's cool. But I just want to give you room to put your own stamp on it. Do you know what I mean? Make it your, make it your own kind of project. Also, side note, we will be using Photoshop and I found a really good alternative to Photoshop the other day. So without further ado, let's hop into Blender over here. I feel like, oh, I need to get that keycap thing. So I'm just gonna quickly install Keycast because you guys wanted that. All right, cool. Right, so screencast enabled. I hope all the technology is working today because it just, it never works for me. But anyway. So let's take it away. So we've got a fresh blender scene and we're going to just scale down this cube. Um, kind of eyeballing it. Um, this model, it was so hard modeling this, honestly, because I couldn't really find any source documentation on what a CD case looks like. It sounds simple, but all the pictures are weirdly low res on the internet. Like I was looking, for ages couldn't really find too much about what they actually look like um but it's cool like we can make do with this it, um so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to so we're gonna hit tab to go into edit mode and from what i've extrapolated from the internet this is the best cd case that i can figure out on how to model um, so we're going to hit A and then control B and that's going to bevel all the edges and then use the scroll wheel to go up. And if your bevel kind of looks like weird and flat, hit control Z and change this little, um, transform pivot point to median point. Um, hit tab to exit edit mode, control A, um, apply the scale back into edit mode, A, control B and now we get um, nice rounded corners on our cube. Perfect. So we've got a beveled cube now, sick. We're gonna do a bunch of loop cuts, um, but we're gonna make two shapes. So we're gonna hit uh, Shift D to duplicate, but don't move your mouse, click in place. And now you'll notice we've got two shapes. Um, put that back. I'm gonna hit H to hide that shape. We're gonna just be working on this bottom shape here. So hit tab to go back into edit mode. And what I'm gonna do is right. So we're gonna add a loop cut in the middle. Oh, I'm gonna hit Control R to add a loop cut in the middle here. And kind of bring it like that far. That looks good. Then hit the C button, and we're gonna use uh, face select here. So hit enter, select face, and hit C. This lets us select these faces. And we're just gonna select all these faces on this edge right here, as you can see. Hit X and delete faces. Cool, so now we've got like this sort of shape. We're gonna also delete this face. So this is the top piece of, of our CD case. I don't think CD cases are perfectly square, actually. They are a tiny bit oblong because um, we're adding on that extra strip on the side. So in top view, I'm actually gonna select, I'm gonna go back into object mode, R90. Just because I like top view to be the top, like when you go into, when you press seven on the numpad, I like the top view to be facing me. Um, so I'm actually going to stretch this a tiny bit, 
along this axis until this bit to me appears like a square like we're not we don't really need to be too precise with it but now we've got a little bit more of an oblong shape uh, click alt h to unhide the other geometry that i had it's under here actually bring it up a little bit so we can see what's going on so probably need to stretch it so hit numpad one to bring it to the side hit s x to scale and holding shift we can like adjust that cool so now we've got these two shapes and so one is the flap and one is the face. So what we gotta do is um, hitting numpad one. If we hold Z and go into wireframe, we can see where that loop cut is there. So we're also gonna add a loop cut. Control R, oh sorry, in edit mode. Control R, did I just add one? No. In edit mode, control R to add another loop cut in a similar place there. Move it kind of like that. Cool. And then back into solid view. Like, this is a weird shape, okay? Like, it's a weird one. It took me a minute to figure out how I could uh, model this. And I'm still not entirely sure, babe. I'm not too, too sure. Right, but we're doing our best. Um, so, this case, essentially, we're going to keep this flap here and we're going to lose these sides. So, hit C. Select those faces there. Uh, sorry, not edge select. I'm going to be in face select mode. So let's hit C, select those, and you can use the scroll wheel to change how big that is. Select that one. Um, select all of these. I think that's right. And select these. And lastly, select this face here. Oops. If you select things with your middle mouse button by accident, it de it deselects them. So So now I'm pretty sure we can go and X those vertices. Oh not vertices, sorry, faces. And I believe we've got our C D shape. So if we bring this down this is starting to look like our CD case kind of shape. Again, the modeling is a bit, it's a bit poo, but it is what it is really, isn't it? <laughs> it is what it is. Ah, what are those? I just noticed that this mesh at the bottom has some, some vertices that I didn't select properly. So when you're using C, it's good practice to select in wireframe mode so that you get everything. But, um, uh, yeah, that should be good. Cool. Now we're just going to add a little bit of uh, geometry on the side here by clicking Alt to select this edge, uh, edge face and hit C to deselect those two and those two over there. And we're just going to actually C again with the middle mouse button, deselect those two faces. And we're just gonna bring the, oh, add another loop cut here, just there. Now click Alt and select that face and see, we're gonna deselect those, including that little looped bit there. Cool. Is there any over there? Cool. Now we're gonna raise this up a little bit just to make a little bit of a lip, a little bit of a lip for our um, CD case. Now we're gonna create um, the CD. So hit Shift A, we're gonna add a, let's add a, let's add a circle. And before you click anywhere else, click this little dialog box. And we're gonna increase the vertices to 70. So now we're going to hit edit mode, hit A in the vertice point and hit 7 to go into top view. I'm going to scale it down. All right, scale it down until it kind of fits in this area. Or maybe a little bit more actually. Something like that. 
and we can make adjustments later so that's going to be our cd shape so now we want to create a cutout for the cd to sit in and so we're going to hit shift a um, we're going to add a cylinder we're also going to make these vertices 70 here enter the top view hold z to go into wireframe and with G, uh, the G button just means you can transform the object and you'll see what we're going to do with this in a second. So create this cylinder a little bit wider than the CD, actually not that much wider, quite close to the CD. Yeah, sorry, my bad. Something like that. Yep, and we're going to actually go back into solid mode. Um, Alt H to hide, unhide everything and bring these two along a little bit like that I'm actually gonna uh, scale them a little bit on the I'm actually gonna make this wide bit a little bit wider but uh, we'll do that in a minute so back into wireframe mode so we've got this external circle right and we're gonna hit H to hide that then we're gonna get hit shift A to add a cube and in the top view, we're gonna scale that down. So something like that. So we want this square to intersect our circle. If we go into solid view again, you're gonna be thinking, hide this top view again. You're be thinking, Steph, what, 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 what is this? So we're going to make a couple shapes on the inside of the case to kind of support the CD. And to do that, we're going to use booleans. So let us um, scale this down somewhat like that. Got a little thing, a little thing. Wow. Use your words, Steph. Use your words. Click Alt-H. Do you know what? We're going to bring her up for a bit because she's just annoying. We don't need her right now. We're going to be hiding and un unhiding things for a little bit. So now if you can kind of see, we've got those little shapes on the side. So we're going to use a Boolean modifier on this rectangle. So go to add modifier, Boolean. And we're going to um, use our eyedropper to select this Boolean object. And now it's telling the computer to cut out where the two intersect because we're using well not intersect actually yeah where they intersect the difference between the you know discrete mathematics and all of that which i didn't pay attention to in first year um but yeah so now we just apply this modifier and then we delete our oops, delete our cylinder and now we've got these little shapes um to be the cd holder and um, we're gonna do a little gonna do a little something something I'm um, gonna select these faces in edit mode I'm gonna select these top faces only and just scale them down but uh, sorry using this uh, thingy thing click individual <laughs> thingy thing change it from medium points individual origins and then hit the scale button and that will scale down your um, geometry according to the individual origins of each shape or part of the geometry you selected so now i've got like this neat little shape i'm maybe gonna actually bring it down a little bit because i don't think it needs to be as pronounced as that and bada boom bada boom we've got a little little nest for the cd cool so let's uh model the cd a little bit more in tab mode uh, select the vertices in top mode hitting numpad seven uh, just make sure that top thing is hidden. I've actually just hidden it again. We don't need it for a while. I'm going to hit ES to inset the faces. Kind of up to here. I'm going to hit E and then S in succession again to bring it kind of to there. Cool. That's our CD modeled for the time being. So we want to add a bit of depth to it. So we're going to add a subdivision surface modifier another little thing we can do to kind of help contrast is go up here to this little drop down go to color and click random this assigns random colors to the objects in the scene so we're going to add a ridge in top view here 
And then we're going to make a little ridge along this edge here. So to add a ridge, we are going to add a loop cut on the inside and loop cut on the outside of that uh, of that loop. Holding Alt to select that entire loop, we're then going to raise it. Make sure you have your subdivision surface on and that will create a little ridge. And if we up the viewport and up the render to three, that's cool. So in edit mode, we've got that little ridge now. I wanna make it a bit more pronounced. So um, just turn off that modifier, select the outer curve and scale it down a bit and select the inner curve and scale it up a bit, turn that back on and the ridge, oh, the ridge should be more pronounced might actually increase the height uh, just by bringing it up a bit amazing I think that's all we're gonna do on the CD for now we'll probably come back to it in a little bit um, also gonna add a modifier solidify modifier and that's pretty much perfect cool so that's our CD modeled and now we need to make we're gonna bring it down a little bit uh, so it's sitting on the plate, actually a little bit up, cool. Now we're going to model that little uh, thingy, the little uh, button in the middle. So we're adding a cylinder again, and this time I'll show you, we're going to have 48 faces this time, change that to 48, perfect, scale this shape down, and I'll come back here scale down and probably about yay big about yay big sure happy with that I'm always hitting uh, I'm hitting G by the way when I'm moving stuff we're hitting G <laughs> to transform the object I'm gonna bring this shape down in thickness kind of like that we're gonna select this top face with Alt A, uh, Alt clip. Top view, we're gonna hit ES to bring that down to about that much again. There's a lot of cylinders, there's a lot of cylinders. And now with face select, I'm gonna count these top three, one, two, three. And from there, I'm gonna hit C to select three faces and then, not three faces. I know we've got checker deselect, but I'm not really sure if there's a way to do this or if if you know, please let me know. But, I mean, I don't mind, it's just quite therapeutic. The reason we made it 48 as well is so that we have a um, multiple of three, so we get an even shape. It'll happen a lot of times that you'll forget to do this, but it's cool. Click C in the middle as well, get that one too, hit X and delete those faces. So now we've got this weird kind of like, bit ugly. So go into wireframe, kind of go down there and select these top faces like that. Go into solid mode. And scale those down to something like that. I'm gonna go and add a subdivision surface modifier. Bump that up to three and three in the render too. Now we're gonna add some loop cuts. So I hit, go into edit mode again, hit R, I'm gonna add a loop cut up there, and a loop cut at the bottom there too. And add a solidify modifier. Pump that up a little bit. So weird, so now we've got our little weird clicky uh, thing. I'm gonna probably make the base, um, if you hit the backslash button, it will isolate your shape. Gonna make this shape um, a little bit uh, less. Yeah, I'm not really sure what I'm trying to say, but I'm showing it, I hope. Yeah. And probably gonna flatten that out too at the bottom by just clicking ES on the bottom as well plan that out cool so hit the backslash button again to get out of that and we're gonna bring that down I'm actually not really sure like 
like how it was i don't have a cd or a cd case in my room so i'm not entirely sure how it works i'm really sorry um but it's suspended disbelief do you know what i mean uh okay so it needs to be a lot more flat than what i made it kind of the subdivision for a second i'm gonna bring these up like a lot and actually make that quite wide and backslash again i'm gonna make the whole thing smaller to fit in there But later on, we're going to make that bit clear so we'll be able to see the disc. Sick. Um, so, I'm going to click Alt-H and bring our little CD case. Oh, not that. That's this one. Bring our little CD case back. And you know what? I think we can start texturing. But before we texture, let's get a little bit of lighting going on so we can see what we're doing. Little brief intermission. That's the first, the main part of modeling sorted. Now we're gonna do a bit of lighting so that we can uh, have a accurate kind of representation of what our shaders are gonna look like when they're lit. So let's jump into the lighting setup. Okay, so we're gonna do a very simple three point lighting setup. A simple lighting setup is so easy and I'm gonna show you how to make it now again. I'm just trying to sabotage myself sometimes, you know. Shift A, add a cube, scale that up, scale that up, man, and widen that a little bit like that. Cool. In edit mode, we're going to select this face, this face, this face, and this face, hit X and delete that face. And cool, we've got a little like stage area now. But what if you want an infinity screen? Well, first we're gonna go back into edit mode and maybe gonna bring this little face up a little bit more to give us some more kind of floor space um, I'd make the floor a bit wider and then select these two and actually make that a little bit wider again cool just bring that along sick so now to make an infinity screen back into edit mode we're gonna collect, collect we're gonna collect that edge and then hit control B and move your mouse up and if you scroll your mouse wheel you'll get more and more subdivisions and the smoother like the wider um you do it on the side i'm gonna show you the wider you do it the more infinite it will look but i'm not really too too fast so i'm gonna go with that kind of look and add a couple more subdivisions cool but now we've got this weird like venetian blind like corrugated effect and so they remove that right click it and click shade smooth and save we've got an infinity screen amazing cool perfect wow we're gonna create a lighting setup very 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 simple stuff i'm gonna hit shift a again and add a area light um just gonna inside view by clicking three i'm gonna hit r to rotate it and just rotate it about that much and bring it up about that much cool um in top view i'm gonna bring this with g and rotate that like that shift d to duplicate it rotate that one like that way and shift d that again and we're gonna bring our key light to light our backdrop this is a very like crappy lighting setup but it does the job you get me bring that down and I kind of like to have my lights at kind of different levels so if you do bring the level down remember to adjust like your little pointer thingy um, kind of like that so cool this is like the preliminary setup obviously we need to test it out and see how it works and see if it works well this stage needs to definitely be a lot bigger I don't know why I made it so small because the key light is so close to the object itself so and top view, just gonna bring that kind of like over there. Cool. So now let's have a look at what this looks like. Let's go into rendered mode. This tutorial will be a cycles tutorial, so we can get that crisp, crisp render. So if you're prepared to go through the hassle of using cycles, then let's go. Let's get this bag. Let's get this bag. Right now, 
when EV and things look okay, whatever. But we're gonna switch to cycles here. And if your denoising is taking ages, there's a couple things you can do. Change the CPU to GPU compute and your denoising will be a little bit quicker. You can also go into edit preferences system up here um, and change to optic X if your graphics card allows that. So this lighting is good, like it's okay. Um, but I'm also gonna add a HDR right to create another space, use these crosshairs and drag along. And then you've got two. Up here, we're gonna change to shader editor. Uh, gonna make that a little bit bigger for you guys to see. Oh. Um, gonna change object to world and use node to be selected. Going to bring that down, click uh, environment. This is uh, my, the, the basic kind of uh, HDRI setup. I'm gonna add oh, shift A to add a node, by the way. Light path. I'm gonna add uh, mix shader. And gonna. So over here, gonna click open. I'm gonna open the HDRI that I always. I always use it, it'll be in the description if you want it. I'm gonna bring in this mix shader and plug in our background to the bottom, our HDR right at the top, and then our is camera rate into the factor. This lets us change the background of the of the render. I'm gonna change it to black, but we maintain the HDRI properties um, interacting with our object. We're actually going to unplug this HDRI just for the moment and work solely with the studio lights purely to kind of demonstrate um, demonstrate something so I'm gonna bring this wattage up to 50 maybe 500 and this other wattage up to 500 and the key lights like 250 Cool. like this isn't like the most amazing lighting setup but I just want to um, showcase a couple different ways that you can light a scene we're gonna come back to the HDRI later um, once we've got textures down but for now we're gonna see how far we can get with this and we'll maybe incorporate it in a bit cool so let's start texturing our objects um, and I guess we should start, you know what, let's hide this top case. Let's start with the CD. It is the most fun thing to texture. Change world to object and we're gonna add a new material. We don't need her. So what we're gonna be doing is using the principle called anisotropy. And anisotropy is basically when an object or a, or a, 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 a texture or a surface has different properties depending on the way that you look at it. So this is an example. So if we look at a CD, this is like a random VHS recording dusty CD. But um, what you can see is, depending on the way that you look at it, it reflects, refracts light. It has different properties purely depending on the way that it faces. That is a very poor example to see. But depending on the way that you look at it, it has different properties so on one way when you look at it it looks very dull and the other way it looks very shiny so that is also an isotropic material anyway i'm trying to explain a little bit more about what i'm doing so we kind of see it execute in front of us with nodes so shift a and we're going to look up an isotropic bdsf and duplicate that with shift d three times we're going to change each channel to be red that's a bit more magenta isn't it um, just bring it up to red and green and blue. I'm going to change the roughness of all of these materials to 0 0.1, like so. So, we're going to change these anisotropic values to be very similar but slightly different so that you get a different effect when you're looking at the object on your screen from a different direction. Um, so let's change this anisotropy to 0 0.8 and the rotation to 0.98. So we're going to change this anisotropy to 0 0.8 and keep the rotation at 0. And the last anisotropy to 0 0.8 
and change the rotation to 0.2. If you're looking for the values, you can screenshot this now. So basically, we want to mix all of these channels together, but there's no mix shader for three channels. So we're going to have to mix two and then mix two again. So we're going to get a mix shader. So we're going to put the mix shader in the middle here and mix our red and our green at 50% here or 0.5. We're going to duplicate that and bring this shader into the top node and blue into the bottom node and mix that at 0.3. This mixes all of the shades equally. We're going to duplicate this again and we want to create a we want to create a glossy kind of effect. So we're going to bring in a glossy node bring in that into the bottom and make sure that into the top I'm going to change the factor to 0.133 and this glossy is going to come in handy later but we'll stick to that for now and let's just have a look at this material output and see what we get by connecting shader to surface oh that's really cool click on the CD hit tab to enter edit mode and disable both of these uh, modifiers on the modifier tab for a minute so we can see what's going on so we want um these rings so let's hit face select holding alt shift we're gonna select this and this if you're struggling to select those select the um you want to be clicking on these bits here not the bits on, not on these vertical pieces because otherwise you'll select the ring in the opposite direction so select those and go into material add a new material and assign it and so now we've got a clear material um, I'm gonna call this one CD clear actually I'm gonna rename this top one hollow Cool, so now this is looking a bit more like a CD. We're gonna also assign this white material here. We're gonna change this white material to be clear. So up the transmission all the way to zero, bring the roughness down a little bit. And now we've got this clear material. And our CD is starting to look more, a lot more realistic. We're also gonna add a couple little extra bits to the CD. So normally a CD has a ring on the inside that is just metal and a small one on the outside too so we're going to add those as well we already did add it when we were modeling prior this inner ring so hit alt select that ring and back into the materials going to add another one click assign and add another loop cut on the outside click alt uh, and face mode and select that and assign it to that material too. Create a new material, up the metallic. Bring the base color down to kind of like a gray and the roughness down a bunch. So now we've got this kind of like um, CD. I'm gonna bring the roughness down a little bit more and this gray can kind of go a little bit wider. Cool. We're going to turn the modifiers back on for the CD. Oh, and the subdivision surface modifier has now made our metallic rings, which by the way are not doing bits right now. The roughness needs to be pretty much zero. Our metallic rings are huge because the subdivision surface modifier has expanded them. So let's go back into editing mode and turn off solidify and we're going to add a loop cut here on the outside to bring that ring back to a normal kind of position and another one to bring that inner ring back as well scale that down cool so there we go the cd is coming along Another thing I forgot to mention was that we need to change the roughness of the glossy material. Just change the factor to 0 0.333 and I'm going to bring the roughness down to around, I think zero is a bit extreme, so I'm going to have it like 0 0.115. So another thing we're going to add to the disc is a bit of um, bump, but a very, very subtle bump. So we're going to add a bump node and connect normal into displacement. 
and we're going to add a Mars grave texture. So we're going to plug in height into normal and yeah, it looks a little bit crazy. That's a cool effect um, if you ever want to use it. But we're going to click invert. We're going to bring the strength down. And the scale, we're going to bring that way up. This is just to add like a little bit of bend to the texture. I think Musgrave allows the colors to bend a lot wider than they naturally would without it. We're gonna leave the CD for now. So I think it's looking a little bit weird and that's because the lighting is just, the lighting is weird, man. Lighting's weird. Let's carry on making these materials and we'll go and refine them later. What helps is to have a little bit of context. So let's model this plastic material we're actually going to join these so select the base and these triangle things Control j and that will join them just going to do a simple kind of like noisy plastic material simple noisy plastic material plastic cool i'm going to bring the base color down to black and zoom in a little bit there then gonna add a bump again. Bump, cannot spell. Bump into normal and a noise texture. I'm getting sloppy. I'm getting sloppy. Noise. And factor into height gonna change the scale to like 750 like really high number and if we zoom in we get this kind of like it's kind of like noisy plastic maybe make it a little bit bigger let's go 600 we want the noise to be visible um from afar change the strength to like 0.1 and that will make it a lot more realistic kind of noisy plastic surface and invert that so i think we need to invert it do we don't really think it matters with noise this small oh i forgot to join this geometry So we've got our CD disc, Alt H to unhide the cover, obviously we don't want the cover to be black plastic, so go into tab, hit A to select all the vertices, add a new material, um, and call that CD case clear, and assign that. Now it's all white, we're going to do the same thing as before, turn the transmission all the way up, and sorry bring the roughness down so now we've got a very basic clear case we can do a lot more with this case it's looking a little bit bland at the moment so here's where the fun part comes i do think we need a little bit more light so let's go back to the world settings in the shader and see what our hdri looks like we're going to keep the lights because it's the lights that create um, it's the lights that create this anisotropic refraction so we want the HDRI for the reflections and the lights for the refraction so we need a combination of both and we're going to fine tune that a lot later so don't worry we'll come back to that so on our top cover this is where shading can get really fun and a bit more intermediate Objects naturally, uh, any objects you pick up in the real world has natural imperfections and these imperfections is what renders it realistic. So we're going to make our own smudgy fingerprinty imperfections on this particular model and I'm going to show you how I create my own maps. I made a bunch of these a few days ago. I'm going to show you how to do it. First you want to get some black paper. I bought this in a craft store. The deeper the black, the, the higher quality the paper, the better this effect is going to be. And then get some like shiny kind of like 
paint pens. I really recommend the Uni Posca pens. And you're going to want to get the colour silver. Rub it on your fingertips and create your own normal maps. And I suggest making two or three so you get a bunch of different variations. As you can see, like I'm just, I am making a bit of a mess, but it's all good. And smudge, 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 make your own maps. And I've made another variation here. Then you want to scan it in with a, uh, literally just take a picture of it on an iPhone. If you know how to kind of increase contrast, make the contrast as great as you can to make the map as crisp as you can and send that to you. And that is now a map that we can use. Make sure there's no borders on it. If you can make it seamless, that's also amazing. Um, but this is a way to incorporate handmade maps into your designs. So now we're going to feed that information to this texture and tell it, right, we want some smudges on the surface of this CD case. We're going to bring in an image texture, so it's shift A, uh, image texture, and plug that into the roughness. Now hit Control T on this image texture to get all of your mapping options. If Control D doesn't work, then go to File, uh, sorry, Edit Preferences, Add-ons, and type in Node Wrangler. That should be already enabled, and click the tick box to enable it. Now we're going to open up the texture that we made, the smudgy, smudgy mix, smudgerson, smudge one. Cool. Um, so now it looks a bit weird so let's um, add a color ramp color ramp essentially indicates how much effect you want uh, this image to have um, in texture coordinate change that to generated so we can see our fingerprints here but they might be a little bit too harsh for me because like no fingerprints unless you just ate some KFC or something like no fingerprints are going to be that harsh on the surface of your model. So what you can do is quickly switch to Eevee, which lets you see these kind of changes a lot more efficiently. Cool. So in Eevee, we can kind of see these imperfections a lot clearer. And we're going to, I'm going to, I don't want it to be that visible. So I'm probably going to bring in the highs and the lows to be quite close to each other. Go back to the cycles and let's have a look. So it's still quite prominent. What we can do is quickly render a snippet by hitting zero and go to view, camera to view, change our perspective to 1920 by 1920. Zoom in a little bit. Zoom in on the side so we can see a side profile. And then control B to render a segment. I'll be sorry I'm gonna render this section so control B just to render that bit hit F12 and let's have a look at what it looks like okay so those imperfections are still very very strong for my liking so what I'm gonna do turn this off what I'm gonna do is um, back on this I'm gonna bring those even more together in this region. Oh no, that's making them stronger. Oh, you do not want that. <coughs> Start. Make it. Yeah, that's a lot more subtle. That's kind of what. That's kind of what I want. Perfect. Cool, 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 cool. Now we've got our custom surface smudging. I feel like we can also add some scratches and for scratches I'm just gonna go on the internet and download a scratch image it's literally just as simple as typing in scratch texture and downloading one of these which makes you happy I think I got this one and go back to blender back on this plastic material here <coughs> and use this setup instead it's a bit rudimentary, I'm not really sure why it's working, it shouldn't really be working, but it works. That's what we're all about on this channel.
and just play around with with what you get also try changing scratch materials i'm going to change to another one i'm going to try this one here and yeah i pretty much i like this one quite a lot to be honest um i can bring it in quite clearly and the scratches are really realistic so i think we're gonna go with this one so we've officially added scratches and smudges to the outside of our cd texture which just adds a little bit of character do you know what i mean let's also add some scratches to the cd so we'll copy this set up here hide this outer layer and paste this oops and delete that change smudge to scratched metal I took smudge by accident and plug the color into roughness depending on how much we let in there we go we've got some smudges on our cd uh, sorry scratches on our cd and change that to non-color again perfect right so why don't we add some text to the cd as well while we're at it and i did that in the same way that i normally add uh you know things into my scene i like doing things in a physical space as well all i did to add some text is i got a i got like an old envelope wrote what i wanted to write on the envelope and took a picture again on my phone you can probably use the scan texture that'll probably be a better shout i forgot to do that this time though and um yeah just yeah just bring it into like photoshop and you want to make the background completely translucent also creating a file create a file in photoshop with a really high resolution of minimum 300 dpi paste your image in uh remove the background uh, remove the white areas or whatever so you've just got text on a clear background make sure there are no artifacts on this clear background because they will show up and I, it took me a couple of tries to get that right uh, shift a images images is plain it's called text text i don't know why i do this to myself <coughs> anyway we're gonna rotate it along here by 90. and i want to kind of like move the text around so what i can do is add loop cuts if we hit tab and okay Control R, we can add loop cuts on this shape. Shift R. So Control R. Come on, give me a yeah. So cut really close to your words. So you can get a you can uh, kind of like move them close together or not whatnot. Cool. And then we'll select this hit p selection p selection p selection and hit tab this all this white stuff we can delete that and now all of these objects are their individual um individual constituent you know whatever you want to call it so i'm going to group these together uh but if you see like the reason why i said cut close to the bottom of your border so that you don't uh do that I'm going to join them, control J, and then scale that down a bit. Cool. So we've got our text. I'm going to join those together, control J, bring them towards the CD just until it peaks out. Just on the surface. Ooh. Yeah. Cool. Then you're gonna click the hold shift, click the CD, control P, set parent to object. It's cool. Now the CD has the text on it and it moves around with the text. Sorted. So we've done that. <coughs> Let's put the CD back in its place. 
Hmm, what else can we do? Let's add a little sticker. Alt H on the case. Let's add, I've already designed one again with your Photoshop uh, designer sticker. Uh, do your thing, honey. He's like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. Now we're going to rotate it so it's right side up. 90. Scale that down. And another thing I want to do is show you how to make your own normal and um, bump bump maps too. So firstly, I'm gonna bring this sticker to the surface till it disappears. Cool. And we're gonna make our own bump maps for this video too. So clicking this sticker, um, again, uh, so when you have images as planes, essentially uh, you've got your color layer and then your alpha layer, which when you disconnect, you get like a black background around your picture. The alpha layer tells the image to cut out any uh, the, the bits that have been marked as alpha. And so we can use alphas to also create, um, what am I talking about? I genuinely don't remember. Yeah, we can create our own bump maps. So the rule with bump maps, and I'll illustrate this very simply. So say for instance, this is a map that I've made. If this was a, um, a roughness map, for instance, now the key to roughness is that any black object or black area of the map will be completely um, shiny. And any uh, white, completely white area of the map will be dull. So if I made a sticker with um, a black heart and turned it into a map, the black areas will be shiny and the grey areas will be somewhere in between dull and shiny. So this is a very simple map, but just know that black is raised, white is dull, and any greys in between are kind of like an in-between kind of material. So in here you can see in Photoshop, I'm making all the text on my sticker completely black. This is the simplest roughness map you're ever gonna get. They get really complex if you're doing like terrain, you're gonna have lots of grays and lots of variation in there. But right now, um, we've got, we're just gonna use black and white. I don't want any grays in my maps. We can go back into Blender now and go on this sticker image, duplicate this, and we're gonna select uh, the map that we made. So I'm gonna click roughness map. I'm gonna change sRGB to uh, non-color and plug that into color into roughness. So now you can see if we get a light pretty close to our source. I can show you exactly what effect I am talking about. So now, if you look closely, don't know if you can see that, but especially there, the light is catching on the sticker, but as soon as it goes into the yellow, it's suddenly dull. So we can see here a little bit clearer that the sticker is shiny only in the bits where the roughness map was completely black. And to make this even more noticeable, we can actually use the same roughness map if we duplicate this, add a bump node, plug color into height and plug normal into normal. We can actually raise that area. So now we've actually created an embossed sticker and zoomed in, I actually didn't make my sticker a high resolution. So we've got a bit of pixelation going on. So make sure that you make your stickers at least 300 DPI. But we've got like an embossed kind of effect on our sticker, which is really cute. Yay. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. 
So those are just a bunch of techniques that I wanted to show you and I don't think I really want to take this video any further um, other than just showing you how to pair in and set up your photography for this image. Um, let's just pair in all the objects and now. I'm just going to pair in this, 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 to this. So this, I kind of want to leave this tutorial here. Um, I've showed you how to model it and all of these advanced techniques that I was speaking about and if you bring any lights closer to your object you're going to get a lot of diffraction and diffusion on it. I think these scratches are a bit intense so I'm going to bring those down a little bit. Moving that about a little bit. And going into render settings, I can change my samples to like 500, turn on uh, denoising by going into denoising data under the passes, go to compositing, use nodes, uh, add a denoise node here, plug in denoising normal, denoising uh, albedo. And let's just hit that to render and have a look at what we got. I'm just gonna set that up a little bit better. Change the color to like a green. Right, let's let's get that rendered out. So I'll probably leave it at that today. I think. Um, I hope you've learned a bunch of uh, modeling, texturing, lighting sort of um, bits and bobs that you can put into your work i'm glad to be back i'm gonna hopefully be putting out a lot more videos and a lot, lot a lot of different kind of videos as well for you guys so welcome back to internet girl sorry again for the long format but i feel like people find them kind of useful there's a there was a lot to cover in this video and in future videos we can maybe take a stab at um putting some armature on this model animating it um continuing to further develop this model but i think for a bunch of techniques um to have learned today <clears throat> i think we learned a bunch of cool techniques um that you can use in pretty much any render you're ever gonna make so i think i'm gonna leave it here thanks for tuning in guys i'll see you very very soon um gonna have a really cool year of renders and i'm ready to properly throw myself into youtube um, so yeah, I'm really gassed to be back and I will catch you all very, very soon. Ciao.